Okay, so now that we've talked about kind of the motivation of this in the context of our expression tree processing app, let's now go ahead and talk about the structure and functionality from the point of view of what's in the Gang of Four book, which, which naturally will be more generalizable than expression trees. So the intent of the template method pattern is to provide an algorithm skeleton in a method, the so-called template method, while deferring some of the steps to subclasses that selectively override the hook methods that are used to implement the template method. So you can see here, this is the, the handle input method. You can see the steps, prompt user, receive input, make command, execute command. Those are the steps and that's defined once in the template method handle input. You should apply this pattern if you want to, to do these invariant parts one time and then allow control variability through subclassing. And you can see here that we're gonna localize common behavior in the abstract base class in order to enhance the reuse. So that's all put in one place. And then any variability that needs to be done is handled by subclassing. So it's very structured, very stylized. Once you understand this pattern, it's basically a you know, paint by numbers kind of approach. You don't have to think too deeply about it. It's really, really, really simple which of course is one reason why it's so common and widely used in almost every object-oriented framework ever devised. The actual structure and participants of this pattern are also extremely easy. We have uh, an abstract class, which could be something like our ET event handler, and it defines a template method and a bunch of primitive operations, or what I like to call hook methods. And then we have a concrete class which can selectively override one or more of the hook methods or the primitive operations. So verbose mode, ET event handler, succinct mode, ET event handler would be examples of concrete classes. And as I said before, the, the primitive operations are, are often called hook methods nowadays. And you can read more about what a hook method is down here. And I think it actually gives a reference back to the template method pattern because that's one of the most common ways to implement hook methods. There are other ways to implement hook methods through things like functors or strategies or pointers to functions and so on. But in an object-oriented program, we usually do it in a model that uses the template method pattern. The template method itself, of course, is written in terms of these hook methods. And you can, you can have many of them, you can have few of them, you can conditionally call them and so on and so forth. But the key point is that the algorithm defined by the template method is typically fixed, it does these steps in a particular way, in a particular order, at a particular time, and then those steps can be overridden by the subclasses. And this is just good old object-oriented programming 101. So you have a superclass or a base class with virtual methods. They may or may not be pure virtual methods, but then you allow them to be selectively overridden by subclasses or derived classes. And if you take a look at this article by Bjorn Strustrup called What is Object-Oriented Programming, which he wrote probably like 35 years ago, uh, he gives a real nice explanation of, of this basic concept that's at the heart of object-oriented programming. And the template method is just taking that and making it a bit more stylized in how it's applied. 